I'm pretty excited about this. This is um, something that I haven't come across yet, and it's a usable um, logic session that looks like it possibly could have been the actual logic session that the track was recorded into, and it's for a song that I really actually enjoyed at the time, The Fear by Lily Allen. Um, This was recorded in 2007, but it came out in 2008, right at the end of the year. So that means it was kind of a hit in 2009, I suppose, because it was in December 2008, and um, who knows, how long did it take to um, (laughs) to come out? I'm going to read you the first page of the wiki. The Fear is a song by English singer-songwriter Lily Allen from her second studio album, It's Not Me, It's You, 2009. Written by Allen and Greg Kirsten. The, by Allen, Lily Allen. And Greg Kirsten. That's, yeah, that's right. The song was released as a lead single from the album. Initially, Everyone's At It was announced to be the first single from the album. However, it was ultimately decided on The Fear to be released on 26th of January, 2009 by Regal Recordings. While Alan posed, posted the demo, which was then titled, I Don't Know, uh, onto her MySpace account in 2008, April, uh, the song incorporates electropop music as the lyrics articulate problems with celebrity lifestyles and include metaphors for recognised tabloid national newspapers such as The Sun and The Daily Mirror. If you'd like to read more about that, you can go on to Wikipedia and have a look at her page um, on this particular song. Really, really, really cool. Uh, I've been in and just had a quick look at this, and it's, it's a spectacular session. And for for one of the one of the reasons being that um, this session actually has a video clip in the session. It's 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 it's. It. Let's just go over to the window. Let's check it out. Oh, don't forget to do all the clay stuff like subscribing and all that stuff. Actually, really helps. I'm about halfway to that point that YouTube people want you to be at. So thank you very much for subscribing and um, checking out the other videos and adding your comments. Have you seen Lily Allen? I think I might have seen her live in 2000 and something, but I don't remember. Long story. Anyway, mix window. Look at this session. This is beautifully laid out. The way that you know the pros will do these things. Then it's everything's chopped in there. The samples are in there, and not only that, the second. Where are we? The the mix window is also everything's on there. It's it's an entire session. There's a few things. Is there anything that I don't have? This looks like all stock plugins because I've just got stock Logic. Um, do I? I can't. I don't even know. But it is all. There, all the EQ, all of the little icons, read only. You know, I don't even know. This is just is really a treat to, to, to behold. So we'll go back and check this out. I'm going to, I don't know where I stand on this video situation in the corner. It's a very small part of the corner and of the rest of the thing. But it's there, so well, let's... Um, if you can't see it, then that became a problem and I put a box over it, okay? But let me assure you the um, the things over there. I'm not going to start with the vocal lead. I'm going to start from the bottom because this is in reverse order to how I would normally lay a session out with the drums as the foundation. I would normally put that at the top and then the vocal and stuff towards the bottom. But this is actually in a mirror image to exactly how I would like normally to have a session laid out. So let's hear the drums from the, t- the, fear, <laughs> the fear and also... Um, please do go and have a look at the original track, which in about five minutes I'll probably put up in one of the corners here. Uh, all right, Drums for the Fear by Lily Allen. Let's get all the way down. Look at all that gorgeous stuff there. There's 30, what have we got, 40 tracks, 50 tracks, 53 tracks. Drums live are uh, really, really, really cool. Oh, this is going to be a bastard to navigate. <laughs> okay, let's start from here. And you can see the video clip in the corner just moving around if I haven't had to block it. Um, all right, drums, let's do it. This session was quite loud too, so I did bring it down. But let's bring that up just so we can hear everything. Interesting. Interesting. It doesn't sound really super full, does it? All the bottom end's been taken away. Okay, okay. There's got to be something else that fills it up, surely. Okay. Add drums ghost. Oh, you've only got a few hits on this particular part. Interesting, interesting. Interesting. 
well, hey, we're in the, the 2000 and somethings here, so, you know, we've got resources and stuff like that. <laughs> so let's hear this clap that comes through, and it's for some reason it's got a kibasa there as its um, icon. This looks like a, like, a, like a music school pack. Hey, get back here. There we go. Pretty basic standard clap. We can dig it. Okay, what about these symbols here? Really kind of washy, gassy, like, listen. Super dry symbols. Crash flanged is going to be an interesting one. Really cool sound. Awesome, awesome. Crash distorted. <laughs> that sounds like a synth. That's so cool. All right, we'll pump through some of these and we'll put a few together. Whoa, 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 wait. Notice when I push stop, you can hear it for a couple more seconds, right? And I push stop. That's because on this track, let's look, you've got uh, a delay here that's still acting. And I could change. Oh no, it doesn't change. Okay, got to go back to 336 milliseconds or whatever it was at. This, these guys, like, they would time this, right? This would be perfect. There we are, zero. zero. Okay, and what did I actually mess up? I did move some vocal takes before. We'll find out in a moment. The vocal takes were slightly out of alignment. I don't know why. They were, like, just a bit ahead of the beat. Um, but I do know this song, so I was comfortable to move it. But Tom's looks like there's two hits. One here. <laughs> really? And then one here. A fantastic piece of musical prowess. <laughs> but they will be making up the drum kit. But look at this. Hi-hats. Weird. Interesting that all the individual elements are, you know, it's uh, it's separate uh, on, a, on a digital drum kit. Where's that? I can see the notes. There's notes there. Why is there no noise coming out of that? See, this it goes to show how much, how little I know about um, logic. Okay, we'll come back to that when we figure out what's happening. Hi hats acoustic. They're definitely acoustic. 808 hi hats. More hi hats. Some snare. There we go. And this is we're starting to thicken it out. This kick. There we go. That's why all that bottom end was taken out of the drums. Here we go. Now we're talking there. Everyone knows it's how you get famous. Very, very, very cool. What a banger. Um, yeah, what's going on with those hi-hats? But let's put all those drums together and have a listen. And a few other sections are here that do different things. Let's hear that. So bits have been dropped out there. Some of the hi-hats are away. And then we've got another piece here with some one-shots right at the start. And you can see in the mix window what's got compression on it and what's being used. See these little purple lines here? That's something that has the, the built-in compression that is on on the track. Um, if anybody wants a more in-depth version of any of this, um, I want to, I'll, I'll, I'll try, but I'm less educated in this matter than a lot of other people. So, I mean, hit up Rick Beto. He'll do it. <laughs> he'll do it. He too. He'll do it. He's fantastic. Rick Beto. Legend. I can't believe the legends now have YouTube, like their own channel. So cool. I love it, man. Rick. Okay, we kind of get the idea there with all of the um, all of the drums. We're going to move over to a bass um, track there. Bass doubled. Now, obviously, a MIDI instrument there. You can see these lines, right? Each one of those is a note. And if I go down here, I can actually, if I chose so, I could change some of these notes um, and interfere with Lily's song. Hear that? 
If I wanted to mess this song up, I could change this to... <laughs> Who's laughing now, Lily? No. <laughs> um, but so we can hear the bass track. I'll remove that. And... Whoa, 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 whoa. Bass double. Let's go. Okay. That note's interesting. Is that a bit lower than I would think? Well, great opportunity to see what's actually happening. It's a synthesizer called Perfect Bass, uh, which seems to be a preset in... Uh, is it a preset? Uh, in Logic, and it's a quote-unquote perfect. Cool, though. Let's change the wave. <laughs> yes. No, back to square. Was it... I think it was on that. <laughs> I shouldn't have messed with it. Um, all right. Well, that's really cool. And then there's obviously after there, we got the uh, a little bit of auto filter. Um, let's hear it with and without. Okay. Right. That's taking out quite a lot of top end. And then you've got obviously the EQ is after that and you're adding in all this this big hump from 50 to 200 is the peak and then down rolling off past 500 to 1K. Um, okay, and a compressor. Uh, how hard is that working? Yeah, it's taking... That's doing a bit of work. Leveling those sounds out. And then the gain after that, negative 10 decibels. So the compressor seems to be... Look at that. Taking 10 dB down... And then they're taking another 10B out there, and they've taken another 10B out there. So that's obviously a pretty powerful bass um, sound going on there. Bass filtered. Interesting that you would take so much out of one bass and then add another one, but with a filtering. I put those together, right? And you get phasing. Little bit. You hear that? Those two notes there. Oh, oh, they honk out a little. Well, they've changed again now. Every now and again, they kind of go froggy, and then they go real deep, and then they go really thin again, and then they go froggy again. So I feel like um, I wonder why. I wonder why that's happening. Sorry, just doing a stream. Uh, sending a message. Sorry. <laughs> um, very strange, very strange. Um, these people know better than I, so I won't doubt the ability. Of course, I just question the. Um, I, I would want. I would love to know why, because I would like to make something as good as this song. This is called Bass Buzz, and that has. It's just called Bass Buzz. It's got an EQ and a gain on it, and a little bit of a roll off right at the bottom end. Okay, that's pretty beefy, man. It's like industrial. But obviously we're playing a different kind of music, so the chordal properties or the the, the, um, the, the modal properties are going to be different. Um, we put those three bass together. Okay. All right. Yeah, suddenly those little phase problems seem negligible now that we added this big fat monster to it. And also, what I really like about these sounds in here is the contrast to Lily Allen's beautiful voice. It's so innocent and, and quiet and nice. And then you've got <laughs> Jonathan Davis on both. <laughs> wow. We'll add some of those. Some of those snares. You know what I'm saying? And then you got this like cute little voice on the top, um, which is just yeah, a complete contrast. So sound effects. There's one. Oh, one here is clipped. But that's that's been muted. What's going on with that? I wonder. 
mute on off. Let's unmute it and hear it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so that looks just like a little effects channel. Um, they are, that's a synth, is it? Amp, stereo delay. No, it's a sample. That's the sound. I wonder what it sounds like without anything on it. Let's turn everything off. Because we can now. We have this. This is so cool. That's a guitar. Wow. That's a guitar, man. That is so cool. And then what do you do to this guitar? You add amp. Let's hear it. I'm going to put this over at the top so we can hear it all. So what's that done? They've got a Fender style amp there with logic on the front. And they've just added, what, a little bit of, what can I see here? There's some gain. Um, the bass is down to one. The mids are up to ten. And the treble's up to like eight and a half. Bit of reverb at six, about halfway. Um, that's on. The effects are switched off. And the tremolo is on. But I don't think that's really doing a whole lot, is it? Very cool. And then what do we do? We add a stereo delay. And so that's probably going bop, 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 bop. And it's got that ping pong thing. This compressor here. With, we don't need to look at that delay. It's fine. This compressor. Just to level that out. And then another tape delay. All right. We'll go back to that other delay. Okay. We can see. Excuse me. We can see we've got a quarter note, a quarter note on the right and, a, and an eighth note on the, on the left. And the division... Is the, d the deviation is set up to 50%. Listen again. We'll get rid of that tape delay first. Okay, now we'll add that tape delay and leave the stereo delay on, of course, as well. Very cool. All right, get rid of the stereo delay and just keep the tape delay. More of a straight up ba 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 kind of delay. Anyway, we could spend all day on delays. Let's hear what the EQ is doing, which is just taking looks like a little bit of mid range out. Um, okay, and hear that. And then the gain is just taking all the volume back. So we're down there. There we go. We just spent five minutes on a sound effect. That sounds cool. <laughs> and now, what's this particular one here? We have. Synth timpani, timpani, timpani. All right, hang on, we get rid of that. Synth timpani. Let's hear it. Look at the picture and everything. And it's distorted a little bit too, which is interesting because the song sounds so really clean and tightly produced that you wouldn't really imagine that there would be a whole lot of like distorted elements in here. Uh, however, we got that and we got that big dirty bass too. Here's some violins towards the end of the song. MIDI instruments too. I just realised... The fact that this is on here means I could make something this, like this. Like, I mean, if I were good. <laughs> but, I mean, there's violins in here. Staccato violins. That's so cool. That means I could, like, make a little orchestra, orchestral arrangement. Let's change something. Let's mess with something. It'll be funny. Hang on, what's going on? Let's hear... Let me get back here. We'll highlight this. And then... Oh, that's velocity. Okay. Filter. That's cool. I mean, that not not that it sounds cool, but it's cool that I can do it. Um, mod matrix modulators. I was just getting into where everything's mapping. Okay. We don't need to mess with that too much. Well, we don't need to mess with it at all. The song's mixed. But cool to know that that's there. Um, all right. Next. <laughs> Violin flange. Flange. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it. It's flanged and panned. Okay. It's got a heap of stuff on it. Flanger. What's this Evoc FB? What's this mean? Filter bank. Okay, interesting. Let's 
Wow. So strange to know this song and then to hear these. Because um, this sounds like a spooky song and it's got some real spooky sounds in it. That spooky, the big fat bass and then those those drums. Like... Really cool. We'll put... <laughs> yeah, you can hear that. All right, we'll put these um, strings together and see if there's any sections where they meet. And maybe we start at the start of the mini note. Okay, okay. Well, there's really not a lot of times at which the violin meets with itself. Yeah, it just kind of goes over. So that's really good. I mean, <laughs> wee -oo, wee -oo. synth analog right towards the end. Now, that looks like a wave file, so that's probably a recorded instrument. <laughs> it's panned, hard left, hard right, sorry, depending on where you're looking. Okay, a little bit of a nice fade out there, a gorgeous little fade out. Okay, we'll go over to Synth Euro. Uh, these are MIDI notes, which means this is a plug-in called ES2. Is that... I just connected to the mainframe. This is, uh, what is this synth called? Ensemble ES2? Euro hook, huh? Such a dry sound too. Like, interesting that there's such a dry... You know, that, was that, is that getting sent anywhere? No, it's dry. It's not getting sent to a reverb or anything. It's just got that synth and some gain. And the gain probably realistically takes volume away. Let's click on that. Yes, taking another 10 decibels out of it. Okay, all right, all right. That's uh, abrasive. Synth of Vocoder. You know I'm a Vocoder fan. Um, let's move up to that and let's hear what happens. Wow. Okay. Whew, sorry, just trying to keep it together, guys. <laughs> what a day, I tell you. Um, you're joking. Come on. Is that it? That, that. <laughs> Let's give me something, guys. That's cool. And then that distortion there too. And I love the little picture of a DX7 in the corner. Isn't that so cool? That's like, that's so good. I've, there's one of them right there underneath a big old sheet. But um, yeah, wow, well, that's really cool that they've included those old synths in there. I think there's a Moog um, 1 or a Voyager or something in here too as well, as far as icons go. Listen to the distortion on this. Ready? And it's panned too, so put your earphones in. And again, if you're watching, uh, and, and it's still there, and I haven't had any trouble yet, but the um, <laughs> the video clip is actually over here in the corner playing, so I don't know why or how. Maybe this was made as a demo um, of Logic, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's it appeared to me, and uh, we are watching it. Um, synth Vibrato. Let's hear that. Uh, move over. Through that same synth, that ES2. Crickets. Space music, man. Was that last one ES2 as well? That one's called Sampler, right? That one's with the DX7 sort of thing, but... Put those together. I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, because we'll put all the synths together in a moment. Synth vibrato, synth echoes we are at now. And again, just MIDI notes. There's not a whole lot of interest in the visual. Again, this is like a Nine Inch Nails track in, in hiding, you know. Um, it's just so, all these really cool, like, dark sounds 
in this kind of happy song. I mean, hopeful but happy. I don't know. It's cool. Listen up. That's one of the first things that really sticks out to me as a part of the song that I can, you know, recognize. That's um, a very big part of the song. And again, though, it sounds still quite dark, even though the chord choices are bright. The tonality of the actual sample. It's got some grit, some delay, some unsureness, some like wobble. Cool. All right. I like that. This is the uh, definition of, you know, when you go for a job and they're like, give me an example of a time you think outside the box. And you go, you don't want me to think outside the box. You want me to live in the box and work in the box for you, doing what you set as the box parameters. Well, I feel like this is the example of thinking outside of the box because you, you think of Lily Allen, you hear Lily Allen's music and you don't think, you know what, we should get Trent Reznor to do this one and you know who else could be on it? Jason Statham. He can go in there, do some rhymes about epinephrine. I don't know why Jason Statham keeps coming up but I really want him to do something. He's got he's got a, like a channel where he like exposes cool new music. I want to hear some of his stuff though. Jason Statham and the epinephrines. That'll be fantastic. <laughs> but like, it's just thinking outside of the box. It's Lily Allen and like this Nine Inch Nails sound um, t- tone tonally. And then you get these gorgeous songs out of it. Synth low, let's hear it and I'll shut up. It's me, Jason Statham. Listening to some low synth. That's why I got no friends, guys. <laughs> That's really lovely. Just look at that simple EQ. Just roll a bit off the bum. Roll a bit out of the bottom end and you have got yourself um, the low end synth for this. And it's been recorded in probably by a hardware synth um, or perhaps from another thing that they didn't have the license for the plug-in for, but I mean, you know, it's Lily Allen's people, of course they have the license for the plug-in. Synth Fuzz. Now there's a picture of that little Moog. Now what is that? Is that a Voyager or a One? I can't... Yeah, oh man, my eyesight's horrible. I mean, identifying synths is horrible for me. Anyway, listen to this. And that's done with that ES2 factory synth again. And that's the perfect bass preset as well. Really strange. That's the perfect bass preset. Hmm. I'm trying to mess with it just to just to be annoying. Did I do it? Yeah, I totally. I totally fucked it. That's back to normal, right? I don't know. Stop messing with Lily Allen stuff. <laughs> electric piano delayed. Is there many more? It's going to be the same thing. Yeah, we're not going to mess with that. Okay, electric piano delayed. Okay. That's really cool. Because that's an electric piano, like a Wurlitzer Rhodes sort of style thing. See, it's even got Suitcase Mark 1 on there, and um, it looks like a Rhodes. And, yeah, it's a really creative use of that. Um, They synth it out a little bit and give it some delay and all kinds of cool stuff. Now, what about this submarine with the electric piano? Except there's a picture of a pedal steel guitar there, which I find interesting. Oh, by the way, that electric piano delayed sound, right? That's the thing that keeps, every time I hit stop, it goes bum, bum. It just continues because it's got a built-in delay, a factory delay, a pl- factory plug-in, if you will. Um, okay, submarine.
Real high note. And then we have another bit up the back here. Front, rather. Okay, it's just a single note. Now I'm going to play all of those synths together, I think. Um, yep, that one too. And we'll just go through and have a quick listen to some of them together. See the strings going. I don't know the words to this, by the way. Okay, and then we've got another little section up here with that synth lead. That's really cool. And then this one little section here. We have that synth vibrato. Everything together, right? Sounds like a like a one of those um you know seventies movies where they go into space and they meet ET for the first time or something. Or they E. T. finally gets on the plane and goes home or something. <laughs> But also, I just want to draw attention to something real quick, and I should have done this at the start, but you can see here how all of these individual channels, rather than being a big slab of audio, actually, let's let's get a good thumbnail on this one. I hate it how people do this, and then they take the photo of that, and that becomes a thumbnail, and they're like, oh my god, it's an exciting thing, and they pretend like it's really exciting, like, oh, it's like Michael Jackson stamps, and they go... As if they didn't know it was going to be amazing. Anyway, that's a different story. But have a look. Instead of this being a big slab of audio like you would normally see, the individual tiny little things and all these tiny little squares that have been cut together and stuff like that, that's a lot of the time what these sessions are going to look like in the professional world. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I come across are remix stems, which they render out and send off to DJs so they can you know, create different versions of these songs. Um, and you can see down here where some of these audio files are each one of those has been an individual sample that's been copied across and moved. However, in some drum takes, they would take um, all of these individual drums live here and somebody might clip every single one of those out with a little pair of scissors. Uh, where's the scissors tool? Here we go. And they might go zip, zip, and then they go zip, zip, and then they zip, and they cut all of those little tiny pieces out and delete them so that they've got air between each one of them. So it's just like start, stop, start, stop. However, when you start to do that, and a person from a person who has had, um, uh, well, how do we say this? Um, storage poverty and RAM poverty <laughs> that takes up a lot of sam a lot of clips and a lot of things that are loading into the memory. Um, whereas if you just got a big slab, it's only loaded one piece of audio into the memory at a time. Yeah, bigger file, but not lots of tiny little ones to find. Um, but again, this session is mostly MIDI tracks and then a few audio tracks, so it's doing all the processing in a different way. Now that we've moved from those, and you've heard me talk garbage for a couple of moments, we're going to move over to another different type of electric piano called the clavinet. Um, this is a MIDI instrument too, but let's hear it. Is there an... Okay, here we go. Panned, hard left. I take it the other clavinet's going to be panned, hard right. No, it's just straight up the middle. All right, we'll hear that together. Okay. I, I don't think we can expect much more from that. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> Electric Piano Rhodes. Now, this is Rhodes again, and probably with the same thing, the sampler. Oh, no, this is a sampler. How is this a Rhodes if this is a... Let's hear it. Go on. Go on. That sounds more like a bloody Rhodes than the other the plug-in. Bugger off. That is amazing. That sounds more like a Rhodes than the electric piano um, plug-in does. Let's hear that. Sorry. You can't be. Get the delay off. Come over here to where there's an actual note. 
Oh, that does sound pretty good. But I mean, like, hang on, I'll get rid of that and we'll go back to that. That's a synth. Someone's created that out of waves and filters. That's pretty bloody impressive. Give me, give me a break. I feel like the only thing it's missing... ...is a bit of distortion, a bit of... Or maybe I'll go for overdrive instead. Yeah, we'll remove that. We're going to move that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm getting a bit creative here. Overdrive. Oh, bugger it. We'll make it stereo. Why not? Um, back it up. Nah, it's not going to clip out the same because it's not interacting with the um, instrument like a real thing, so it's not going to do it. But that's okay. Really cool that they can get a Rhodes to sound, I mean, a, a synth to sound exactly like that. I mean, of course they can. It's the, the year bloody 2000, isn't it? <laughs> but really impressive. This is the electric piano plug-in. There we are. So, of course... But still, I'm very impressed with that that um, individual's synth sampler. Wow. Hang on a minute. Sampler? Oh, any... I'm a moron, guys. This is what happened when you got your head so far up your ass you don't even realise that it's playing a bloody sample. Um, that's right, isn't it? I don't know. I'm moving on from that. I'm making too much of a wank of myself. Uh, we'll move over to the <laughs> suitcase piano again. That sounds great. And with the E piano on there. That sounds like it's clipping out a little bit too, or is it just my headphones? It's probably just my headphones. But a very detailed um piano part there which is really cool it's got lots of you can see the moments there where that are kind of gray those are bits of MIDI information um, and they have been played are they, can I see that it's like the maybe it's the um what's that pedal called you know <laughs> you can tell I don't, I'm not a player um, moving over to the next part which is the same piece with that sampler again so of course it's playing a sample uh, really cool guitar hits and then we're going to move up oh there's a few guitar pieces until vocals all right okay okay what's it got on it pedal board never use that what's this whoa and you can pick what you want and throw it in there fuzz face uh, spring delay, roto phase, and just a big, big old delay, a tape delay. Ah, didn't know that was there. Goodbye, all this crap behind me. See you later. Software is where it's at, apparently. <laughs> Again, it's the year 2000. We might as well step into the future. <laughs> when you think. When you think the year 2000 still feels like the future. Okay. Alright, that's chopped up like a boss. I wonder why they chopped it so hard. Wow, wow, okay, one more bit. Very cool. Guitar Delayed is next. Um, yeah, we know that's it's going to be the same. Let's go to Guitar Delayed. Guitar no longer delayed. Guitar delayed, guitar no longer delayed. This is dry. Somewhat dry. There's a little bit of um, amp reverb on there. And then we go back to this The Edge from U2 sound. Really cool, really nice regeneration on that on the um, on the return of the tape. What's it called? The delay. Uh, 
All right, all right, all right. Guitar, acoustic, let's move to that. Yeah, that's nice. That sounds like it's got a bass note in it. Like, it could be an acoustic nylon, but it also has some kind of, you know, like a lower thing going on in there. And then we've got a plug-in, a, a, a synth plug-in with called, which is called Guitar Nylon. Is it a sampler or is that... Yeah, sampler again. All right. Okay. Now, this has been a big eye-opener for me because I didn't know any of this stuff was in Logic. And I'm really interested in this sampler because if that can play back things like that... There we go. Look at that. GK Nylon guitar. So, the fear. Oh, so it's got... Everything's built into the session. Ah. <sighs> Oh, wow. What a comprehensive file I have here. That's cool. Didn't know that was there. Might steal the nylon guitar from Lily Allen track to use for some other things that I think would be very cool. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Okay, vocoder, vocal. Let's move up to that. And now we're going to go to this middle part here, which is where um, I tell the people that are watching on Facebook to go onto the YouTube page and type in some of these words, and uh, yeah, I get to be one of those guys who points now, uh, and uh, click all the buttons that say you'll be loyal to me for eternity. I'll give you nothing in return, and you can um, worship me as a god, as all people on YouTube expect from their peon audience, but... <laughs> It's a big game, guys. I'm just here for a good time, all right? But um, I really appreciate that everyone's getting behind it and having a good look at things. Janet Jackson, Michael, of course, Jackson, um, Beyonce, uh, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, Madonna, um, Barry White, Earth, Wind & Fire, uh, Prince, everything that I like, I get to find it and I get to do it and, and, and you guys uh, seem to be having a good time watching it. So I thank you all very much for that. Go and hit all those buttons and... Um, yeah, cool. Here's more of this. This is way better than whatever I'm talking about. Vocoder. Very interested to see how this is set up because I could definitely use me some vocoder. wrong button. What's this? I did something wrong. <laughs> oh, I'm still on the cut. Go pointer tool. All right. <laughs> All right. So I can see what's going on here. Why are these notes red? I need to know how. I'll figure this out later, but this vocoder is of interest and really kind of low in the mix or something. I mean, let's try to identify it when we put them together, but... You know what I mean? It's quite low. Peaking out at negative 21.9. Interesting. Okay, very interesting. Um, let's just take one little step back here and we're just going to have a listen to some of that music put back together because we're down to the last few channels with vocals. But um, we'll go from there and we can add... Add some more of these strange things. You really wouldn't know what's going on yet, would you? Some roads. Oh, they give too much away. Let's try this. Alright. I'm going to add some of those drums. Now we're getting it. Rest of it. See that? Everything comes together. Everything comes together and makes sense in the end, even if individually it doesn't. This is like looking at your problems. 
You know what I mean? You're looking at your problems from too far back, and you can, all you can see is one big mess of a thing. But you go in and you find little bits. You've got to try to make sense of them and then reapply them to the situation. There we go. There's a bit of psychology for you. That doesn't make any sense. Can't hear that vocoder. Can't even hear that vocoder. Um, see you later, everything there. <laughs> go up to this. And again, we're going backwards here because this workflow is different. Um... So we've got some chorus doubling, right? I don't know what's right and what's real See anymore. what I mean? It's gorgeous voice. Um, what's on there? Pitch correction, Lily Allen. Not a, not a crime, by the way. Not caught out, oh my God, Lily Allen, I caught you. But see what I mean? It's you can use this stuff and still be a great singer. Like let's all right, let's take it off and see how much difference it actually makes. Let's hear it with. And I'm going to. I want to. I want to loop this piece. Uh, 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 I want to hear just this one little bit. All right, Lily, let's do it. I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. Now, why did I know that that had pitch correction on it straight away? Right? Why did I go looking for it? It's because of the more, the more, the vibrato on the more, more. But it went like, it went like, whoa, it like went strange. Listen up. I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. That I don't. That's an artifacting of these type of things. Now let's take it away. She still sounds good. I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. I don't See, there's nothing different there. To be perfectly honest, doesn't need to be on. Don't know why they put it on. Probably because the record label's like, no, we want it on. We have to have it. And also, we're going to choose which single goes out because they did that to her. She didn't want to put this one out first, but they did it anyway. I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. Lily Allen probably, don't, Lily Allen probably doesn't know about this until now because she watches. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, a lot of these people don't have a choice in what they're doing. Um, I don't know that. I don't really doesn't really bother me. Auto-tune, I think, is a great tool. Um, and, again, Lily Allen's got enough talent to... No one gives a shit if she's got it on or not. And I don't know how I'm meant to feel anymore. When do you without? think it will all become clear? And, again, it's just control over her. Cause she I'm doesn't need it. Because I'm being taken over by the fear. Listen how good she is, see? Like, that's without auto-tune. Because I'm being taken over by the fear. And then this pedantry of adding this pitch correction that's really unnecessary, and it's got the scale in there that she's using. Because I'm being taken over by the fear. Well, there you go. It's a, what it was, let's say, A-sharp major, but that was changing, wasn't it? Yeah, input F, and then see they're changing it. So they're using MIDI information uh, underneath. Maybe is that because it's driving the vocoder? Is it driving the vocoder? Is it driving the vocoder? We'll find out. Let's. I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. And I don't know how Watch I'm those meant numbers. to feel anymore. When do you th- yeah, they don't look linked because those aren't changing together. When when these little MIDI notes down the bottom change, this note's not changing. Oh, when do you th- see it's taking a little bit of time. Not don't seem to be linked, but I don't know how this stuff works. These guys know better than I. Um, next track, chorus doubling four, and this one's pan to the right, so we can hear that one right now. I don't know what's right and what. She said a lot of female, bloody Jason Statham. I don't know what it's like to be on epinephrine. Real anymore. We might as well add the other one in. And I don't know how I'm meant to feel anymore. When do you think it will all become clear? Oh, I like that. What's that little bit in the background there? Clear. <laughs> I love these little bits. And then... Cause I'm being taken over by the fear. All right, now we've got another set of chorus Dublins. So I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. Okay. Cause I don't know Same part, how I'm meant another piece to feel we're adding. Here we go. Anymore. Thickening it out. And then one as well add the other two. 
but she sounds just different enough for it to sound like a thicker, different take. She like you know not like how um you know Mariah was doing her backups or Janet was doing her backups or um Beyonce was doing her backups and they were so tight that they were phasing. These sound nice and they sound good enough together to be different. And then we've got this extra one at the back here, which we'll throw in at the end. Listen up. I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. Let's add that middle one. Here we go, five. And I don't know how I'm meant to feel Right up the centre. Anymore. Just bringing it together. When do you think it will all become clear? Clear. Because I'm being taken over by the fear. Really cool, really, really, really cool. And that part there happens a few times in the song, and it's just those vocals, and then the rest is a, s- a bit of vocal delays, which we're going to have a look at, and then it's like a single central lead vocal track. Mama. Mama. <laughs> Mama. And that's got some tape delay on it. We can remove that and have a listen. Let's take it away and hear it. Mama. And the compressor really kicks in, so it's probably going to have, what's the threshold there, the ratio, where is, the attack is quite fast, but the release is really long. Okay. Oh, it's, it's long enough. Listen up. Oh, go back in. Need to see where I'm clicking. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Um, tape delay back, and we can hear it again. And you can hear that air rising up there, the compressor kicking in on it. And now, we have that a few times. We know what that sounds like. Voice lead. Lily Allen. Listen up. Listen to this. Not you. You. Let's see it. I want to be rich and I want lots of money. I don't care about clever. I don't care about funny. I want loads of clothes. I want loads of diamonds. This is raw Lily Allen. This is not this stuff they've put on her that she didn't know. Diamonds. I heard people die while they're trying to find them. And I'll take my clothes off and it will be shameless because everyone knows that's how you get famous. I'll look at the sun and I'll look in the mirror. I'm on the right track, yeah, I'm on to a winner. And I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. Interesting. I like that little bit, a little bit at the end there. That's that's just relaxing. You know you've got f- five other vocal tracks in there and a delay going over the top. So you just you just go. It's real anymore. Everybody freaking out and ro- worrying about, no, you got to get it right, you got to get it right. Lily Allen, biggest song in 2009. Suck it. And I don't know how I'm meant to feel anymore. That being said, she did have pitch correction on until I took it off. <laughs> Let's put it back on. It's real anymore. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything for it. I'm leaving it off. And I don't know how I'm meant to feel anymore. When do you think it will all become clear? Because I'm being taken over by the fear. Taking everything off except for that game thing. Listen up. Life's about film stars and less about mothers. It's all about fast cars and cussing each other. I like that. That is the dry take with no processing, except for a little bit of the, you know, we'll take off bus one and bus two. You can hear the room, you can hear a little bit dull, and I want to check what the actual EQ is doing. But it doesn't matter because I'm. Why have they not got the analyzer on? I'm packing plastic, and that's what makes my life so very fantastic. And I am a weapon of massive consumption. Still sounds gorgeous. And it's not my fault, it's how I'm programmed to function. You see the compressor? I look at the sun, and I look in the mirror. I'm on- so this is what perplexes me, and I know that it's for some kind of quality that uh, I obviously don't have a grasp on. Um, because they've added 10 dB of makeup gain here, right? So that's just making it louder. Um, on the right tr- track, and yeah. And then what? later on, they're taking it away again. Like, on to a winner. Let's check this. I it's don't cider. know what's right and what's real anymore. Okay, what is that? 
15 kilohertz. And I don't know how I'm meant to feel. Tape, tape delay, we know what tape delay is doing. This is second EQ. Oh. And it's got a tiny bump at 13.6. Put it on. Anymore. I, now, I love this because obviously it works. People are mixing in these studios that they can hear everything. I'm never going to hear that. I'm never going to hear that on $25 earphones. I mean, these were these were not huge expensive, but there you go. This is the industry, guys. Oh. People actually know what they're doing and they're doing their job. And that's me being like, oh, come on. But hey, this is the biggest track I've ever had. Oh. When do you think it Let's will take all 10 become out of it. clear? With that gain at the end, they've just well, nine and a half dB, and then they've taken six dB out of it on the um, on the fader as well. So it makes me wonder sometimes about. I mean, everyone's got a different workflow and everyone works differently, but I always just wonder, like, why would you add that ten dB at the start and then just trim it back later? Um, yeah, I don't know. Again. People know a lot more about this than me. Uh, we've been gone for quite a long time, so we're going to finish up in a Over moment. By the fear. Cool, cool, cool. I really wanted to spend some time on this one because I deserved it. This is a special occasion that we were able to get something uh, this detailed um, and see everything where it where it lives. The mix is done. The volume is done. Um, this is almost this. I suppose this is it before it would go to the master. Or has it been mastered here? I don't know. Um, I'm just just as perplexed as you are. <laughs> I'm like a turtle on a tent post. How did I get here? <laughs> All right, let's start adding some pieces in. Uh, I don't know what's right and what's real anymore. Drums time, baby. All right, it is time for you to go and listen to this song um, on everything, uh, all the time, on repeat, so that Lily Allen can enjoy a couple of bucks. Um, and I can not feel bad about doing this, even though it's fair use and we're having a great time. Thank you all for um, sticking around and having a look. Again, if you'd love to go over, if you'd love to, I don't know if you'd love to, but if you wouldn't mind, go over to the channel and have a look. There might be something you like. Um, there are a lot of other guys asking me about, can you do some punk? Can you do some rock? Sort of. I don't want to. Um, not, not, nothing personal. No, I mean, it is personal. Nothing against punk. That's what I want to say. I spent a lot of time in this industry doing sound for these bands and playing in these bands and stuff like that. I just don't feel like listening to distorted guitar, drums and bass. Um, and not only that, I can't actually get a lot of reliable sessions. Most of the sessions that I get from the rock world and the punk world come from games like Guitar Hero, Rock Band, and they are just not really interesting to look at. There's four channels, drums, bass guitar, vocals, and they're all stereo. It's kind of boring. I love this stuff. I'm interested in seeing these layers, seeing how these songs are built. Um, weird stuff like, who would think? I had a, a guy tell me, he goes, looking at your Facebook profile, you wouldn't think you would be into Dua Lipa. And I'm like, well, you know, it looks can be deceiving. But I really enjoy going through these, and I think it's fantastic. But please do drop your comments in for your requests, and I'll do the best I can to find something. And if I like it, I'll do it. Um, and if you, if enough of you want to see it, I'll give it a crack. You know, I'm really open to this stuff. I think it's really, really cool. And I've learned so much over the last, you know, however many of these that have been happening. Um, you know, I've been applying it to some of the things in my in my daily life. Like, I think about these a lot. And I think about what they mean to those people and what they mean to the people who produce them. And I appreciate being able to share in that by being able to look behind this curtain and find out what was done to create these things that people take for granted. They call it popcorn pop. They call it, you know, flash in the pan bullshit. But it's not. It's really well thought out. A lot of this stuff has got a lot of substance. And it, it, it makes me sad that people dismiss it because they're too busy listening to tough boy stuff and they're trying to be cool or, or, or portray an image. It's like... Daryl Hall and John Oates got picked on by like all the people who were into other stuff. And it's like, well, go and listen, man. The most success successful duo of all time. So really, maybe you should pay attention. Anyway, I'm done ranting. 
enough of these. <laughs> I'm out of here. Thanks so much. Go and grab yourself a glass of water. Um, say hi to your mates. And don't forget to GFY. Bye-bye. That, uh, that was the wrong button. Bye. <laughs>